Hello and welcome to a new episode of Home Sweet Home. Reaching number three in my series about the solar system, this is a special place. That's here, that's home, that's us. Third rock from the sun. On it, every person or animal you ever heard of. The blue marble that turned out to be a pale blue dot. An incredible place that never ceases to amaze us. While we know enough about it to fill an endless row of books, here are the basics in about 10 minutes. It is the densest planet in the solar system. The largest and most massive of the four rocky planets. It has a diameter of 12,742 kilometers. It is 43 kilometers wider at the equator than at the poles. Therefore, the shape is called an oblate spheroid. But this is a tiny deviation, hardly visible in images. Anyway, taking this into account, the furthest distance from the planet's center is the summit of Chimborazo, a volcano in Ecuador. The highest elevation from sea level is Mount Everest in Tibet. The lowest point is the Mariana Trench in the Pacific Ocean. These differences are so tiny in relation to the planet that if you scaled it down to the size of a billiard ball it would be equally smooth. The planet orbits 150 million kilometers from the Sun in about 365 days and it rotates around its axis in 24 hours. The axis of rotation is tilted about 23 degrees. Therefore, locations on the surface experience a different angle of the Sun and a different amount of sunlight per day, depending on which side of the Sun the planet is located. This is called seasons. Towards the poles there are also regions that receive no daylight at all for a part of the year, as well as a midnight sun where the sun remains visible all day. The planet has one moon that orbits it in about 30 days. It is a quarter of the size of the planet, the largest moon in the solar system relative to the size of its planet, although the moon Charon around the dwarf planet Pluto would be larger in relation. The moon is tidally locked, that means it always shows the same side towards the planet while rotating. The backside could only be seen first due to space missions. Sometimes it is called the dark side, which is wrong as everywhere on the moon a 30 days long day can be experienced. The moon probably was the result when an object with about 10% of the planet's mass named Theia collided with the planet 4 billion years ago. The gravitational interaction between the moon and the planet causes tides, stabilizes the orientation of the planet's axis and gradually slows its rotation. About 620 million years ago a day was about 21 hours. From the surface of the planet the apparent sizes of the sun and the moon are approximately the same. Although the sun's diameter is about 400 times as large as the moon's, it is also 400 times more distant. This allows total and annular solar eclipses to occur. The planet has many names. Sometimes it is just called soil or ground, like the old Anglo-Saxon word Erda, that became Earth in English or the German word Erde. The Latin name is Terra, which is also used in scientific writing or science fiction. So we are all Terrans. But it also has been associated with gods and goddesses. In Roman mythology the god Telus, in Greek mythology with the goddess Gaia, and in Norse mythology with the giantess Jörd, mother of Thor. The standard astronomical symbol of Earth consists of a cross circumscribed by a circle, representing the four corners of the world. The atmosphere of Earth consists mostly of nitrogen and oxygen. At sea level, about one kilogram of air presses down on each square centimeter of surface. That's about 15 pounds on each square inch. When sunlight enters the atmosphere, the shorter wavelengths are scattered. Therefore, the sky will appear blue during daytime. Or red when the sun is low in the sky and the rays travel a longer distance through the atmosphere. The weather patterns on Earth are overly complex. There is also extreme weather like cyclones, hurricanes and typhoons. About 40 million years ago a pattern of ice ages began. It intensified about 3 million years ago, 
repeating about every 21,000, 41,000 and 100,000 years. In the last ice age, around 11,700 years ago, ice covered large parts of the continents. Earth lies in the habitable zone around its host star, in which the existence of liquid water is possible. But water exists in all three states on the surface, solid, liquid and gaseous. There is a lot of it, that's why it's called the blue planet. 71% of the surface is covered with it. About 97.5% of that is salt water. From the remaining 2.5% fresh water, 68.7% is present as ice. If all of Earth's surface were at the same elevation as a smooth sphere, the depth of the resulting world ocean would be nearly 3 kilometers. There is a cycle of water. It evaporates over the water surfaces and is transported to land via the atmosphere. Then it falls back onto the surface. A system of rivers brings the water back to the oceans and seas. Water is also an important factor of erosion of surface features. Earth's outer layer is divided into several rigid tectonic plates that migrate across the surface over many millions of years. Along the plate boundaries there is earthquakes, volcanic activity, mountain, mountain building and oceanic trench formation. These processes bring down the oceanic crust back into the mantle. Due to this recycling, most of the ocean floor is less than 100 million years old. Over the period of hundreds of millions of years, the movement has caused areas of continental crust to group together to form supercontinents that broke apart later. Way before 750 million years ago there was Rodinia. Later they recombined again to form Pernotia, 600 to 540 million years ago. At last there was Pangaea. 325 to 180 million years ago. The interior of the planet remains active, with a solid iron inner core, a liquid outer core that generates Earth's magnetic field, and a convecting mantle that drives plate tectonics. The magnetic field helps preventing the atmosphere from being stripped away by the solar wind and occasionally creates an interaction with it nice light phenomena in the sky at the poles. Earth formed over 4.5 billion years ago. About 4 billion years ago, self-replicating molecules on Earth began the process we call life. Due to evolution by natural selection, it was able to adapt to changes in the environment. Later, 3.5 billion years ago, one of these microorganisms became the ancestor of everything that is alive today. We call it LUCA, the last universal common ancestor. 2.5 billion years ago, photosynthesis evolved in the still microscopic life forms the ability to harness energy from sunlight. It produced oxygen as a side product. When the atmosphere was filled with it, it killed most of the previous life forms that did not require oxygen. And new life forms breathing oxygen arose. Also a layer of O3 in the upper atmosphere formed, the ozone layer that acts as a protection against dangerous ultraviolet radiation. Therefore life could get more complex Eukaryotic cells appeared 1.8 billion years ago. They contain membrane compartments with different functions. After a phase 1000 to 541 million years ago, where the planet was probably covered in ice called Snowball Earth, there came the Cambrian explosion, where life really went full speed, still only in water. But until now there were a couple of major mass extinctions. The first major extinction event was the Ordovician Silurian extinction, 450 to 440 million years ago. Globally, 49 to 60 percent of marine genera and nearly 85 percent of marine species was lost. A possible cause for it could have been a gamma ray burst from outer space, caused by a hypernova explosion from a star within 6,000 light years away. 10 seconds of exposure would have been sufficient to destroy Earth's ozone layer. 
After that, animals like insects and scorpions conquered the land. 376 to 360 million years ago, the late Devonian mass extinction followed. 19% of all families and 50% of all genera became extinct, mainly in the water that showed a lack of oxygen. Possibly called by volcanism, could also have been an asteroid impact. The Permian-Triassic extinction event 250 million years ago has been called the Great Dying, as it was Earth's most severe known extinction event. 81% of all marine species and 70% of terrestrial vertebrate species perished. It was also the largest known mass extinction of insects. 57% of all biological families and 83% of all genera became extinct. One of the explanations is flood basalt events, where there are a series of volcanic eruptions on a gigantic scale, or severe climate change by large releases of underwater methane. In the Triassic-Jurassic extinction event, 201 million years ago, 23 to 34% of marine genera disappeared. Causes could also be volcanism or an asteroid impact, with a following acidification of the ocean and climate change. There were also some losses among land animals, but plants, dinosaurs, pterosaurs and mammals were not hit that hard. This allowed the dinosaurs and pterosaurs to become the dominant land animals for the next 135 million years. The rain ended with the impact of an asteroid 66 million years ago in the Cretaceous Paleogene extinction event, where three quarters of the plant and animal species on Earth vanished. No tetrapod weighing more than 25 kilograms survived. After that, the mammals took over. Right now, over 99% of all species that ever lived on Earth are extinct. Still, there are currently 7.8 million species on Earth. Plants are the dominant life form, with 450 billion tons of biomass. Second largest domain of life on Earth is bacteria, with 70 billion tons. Then there is fungi, with 12 billion tons. Then archaea, with 7 billion tons. And protists, with 4 billion tons. All other animals that we know of combined are only 2 billion tons. Most of the weight are tiny arthropods. The larger animals we know of are only a tiny fraction of this. A few hundred thousand years ago, an intelligent species of primates began to appear. Some were able of abstract reasoning, use of language and symbols, problem solving, sociality and social learning. All of them died out, but one species, Homo sapiens. They went from hunter-gatherers and the use of fire to the use of agriculture and animal domestication over tens of thousands of years. Recently, over the last 200 years, there was a rapid advancement of scientific and medical understanding that resulted in increased lifespans and causing the human population to rise exponentially. Currently, there are almost 8 billion humans on Earth, and it will probably peak around 10 billion in the second half of the 21st century. By 2050, 68% of the world's population will be living in cities rather than in rural areas. It's estimated that only one-eighth of Earth's surface is suitable for humans to live on. Three quarters of Earth's surface is covered by oceans leaving one quarter as land and half of that area is desert, high mountains or other unsuitable terrains. While humans are only a fraction of the biomass on Earth, they increasingly impact the environment. There is pollution of the air and water, acid rain, loss of vegetation, overgrazing, deforestation, desertification, loss of wildlife, soil degradation, erosion, and species extinction to an extent that might be a new mass extinction on Earth. Also, there is scientific consensus that humans are causing global warming by releasing greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. 
which is driving changes such as the melting of ice sheets, global rise in sea levels and significant shifts in weather. Earth had never had a planet-wide government. It is divided in several countries and states, but there were attempts of intergovernmental organization. The human species was also able to leave the surface of the planet for a short distance. Until now, way over 500 people have left the surface and 12 of them have stepped on another surface, the moon. When doing so, they reached a distance where it was possible for the first time to take one-shot images of the home planet, which changed the way they thought about their home for a while. When the moon mission stopped, they did not have new images of the whole planet for a long time, as satellites in orbit were too close and missions to other planets were built for a specific task, saving energy until they reached their destination. So they created artificial images of the globe, sometimes connecting images from orbiting satellites. Until now there are nearly 3000 operational satellites orbiting Earth, and over 16,000 pieces of tracked space debris. Until 2015 they positioned a satellite at a greater distance than the Moon aimed at Earth that took an endless series of one-shot images. But it did not really change how they thought about the planet anymore. But actually there was one real image of Earth after the Apollo missions and before that satellite that was made 1990 by the space probe Voyager 1 on the way out of our solar system at about the same distance as Pluto. It still has the potential of making Homo sapiens do what he can do better than other creatures on Earth think. In the next video we will talk about the probable next step for mankind if we survive. Currently we are trying to start a helicopter there. If you like my videos please consider supporting me on Patreon, because I'm on 1415 and the real world is incredible.